Well, to say the least, a joyous Alex Ferguson and a joyous night for Manchester United. And they've qualified for Europe again next season, Dennis, and will be in the Cup Winners' Cup with either Spurs or Nottingham Forest. I was just saying, it was lovely. When you look at the uh, three teams that have got to be in Europe next year from England, Liverpool, Arsenal and Manchester United, rightly back where they belong. They thoroughly deserved it tonight, didn't they? Oh, magnificent night. Thanks, Dennis. Thanks to Jimmy and to Brian. Well, for Manchester United, it all started in Hungary. It's finished with a Dutch treat here in Rotterdam. Manchester United, winners of the European Cup Winners' Cup. From Rotterdam, a very good night to you all. He has the perfect... Rotterdam tonight to watch their team beat Barcelona 2-1 to win the European Cup Winners' Cup. It was a triumphant return to Europe for United, their first cup final there after the lifting of the ban on English clubs, which followed the Heysel Stadium disaster in 1985. The Red Army's invasion of Rotterdam was noisy but peaceful. 13,000 arrived from all over England. They were met by a police operation which was a model of efficiency. Each side's supporters were kept three miles apart until late in the day. They arrived at opposite sides of the ground and never faced each other. No trouble at all. That's what we want. Good, good game tonight. of football, good game. Win or lose, we go home happy. The fine old stadium was the scene of England's last triumph in Europe just before Heisel. Tonight, as the rain drenched the supporters, another historic chapter was about to be written. Not during a tense and aimless first half when Leclerc was the victim of the uneven pitch. But the second period will go down in European legend. Steve Bruce's challenge left Mark Hughes to poach the first. Then a huge solo effort, probably the best in his career. For a man rejected by Barcelona, it was a sweet moment of revenge. The rest of the match was frantic as first Kuhlman's free kick gave the Spanish side hope. Then as Hughes charged after his hat-trick, Nando felled him and got the red card. The United survived to win their first European prize for 23 years, a fitting climax to Brian Robson's career. And so far, the fans too have played their part in England's perfect return to Europe. Peter Staunton, ITN Sport, Rotterdam. Cricket. Tens of thousands of United fans are on the city streets to celebrate their team's European Cup Winners' Cup victory. The team arrived at Manchester Airport a few minutes ago. Manchester United's Red Army returned to Old Trafford today. The European Cup Winners' Cup secured. The reputation of English fans abroad newly restored. In Rotterdam, there was no trouble and praise for the fans came from the police in Holland and the Prime Minister in England. Now Manchester is ready to welcome home the team that conquered Europe. And this is how. Surely not from this range. No, it's going to be Brian Robson floating in there towards Steve Bruce. And it's in there. There's a chance for another one here. Maybe not now. Yes, there is. A fantastic goal by Hughes. Here's Kerman with the free kick. And it's in there. The Barcelona's only goal couldn't stop Brian Robson lifting the cup. United. In Manchester this evening, it's not just United fans who are packing into the city. Luciano Pavarotti is singing to 10,000 people at GMEX. So the city has become one massive traffic jam, but no one seems to mind. And a message to all fans from Manchester tonight. Thank you. Jim Buchanan, ITN, Manchester. Passenger. Cup winners' cup to a hero's welcome from tens of thousands of fans. They lined the streets as the team set off on the traditional victory tour of the city. United's win against Barcelona was also a victory for those campaigning to improve English football's tarnished image abroad. They say the fans' behaviour suggests that the battle against hooliganism is finally being won. An open-top bus carried the victorious United team from the Cheshire countryside into the Manchester suburbs and the heartland of their support. Last night, the headlines belonged to the players, Steve Bruce and fellow goalscorer Mark Hughes. Tonight, the team were happy to share their triumph and the limelight with their supporters. Always look on the bright side of life. Get it! Get it! Get it! Get it! 
The impeccable behaviour of United's Red Army in Rotterdam has been praised by the Dutch police and Britain's Prime Minister. We went over there and everybody really behaved themselves. It was fantastic. You know, I mean, the fans were great. The locals were great towards us. You know, it was a really good day out. No trouble at all. That's what you want, isn't it? A new era for English soccer fans abroad is how the sports minister described it. I'm delighted that English supporters, Manchester United supporters in particular, have demonstrated that clubs can get back into Europe, achieve success and not cause trouble on or off the terraces. The drop in the number of incidents of football hooliganism has been attributed to more efficient policing techniques and greater cooperation between the police and football clubs. Hooliganism at English football matches rose steadily through the 80s. By 1985, the number of arrests and ejections from stadiums stood at more than 8,000. A year later, the figure leapt to 12,000. There was even more crowd trouble in 1987. However, hooliganism does appear to have peaked with a 1988 total of 13,000. Last season saw the number of offenders drop by almost 1,000, a trend likely to continue when the total number of arrests for this season is finalised. But neither the police nor the government believe the problem has been completely solved. There was crowd trouble between Bristol Rovers and West Bromwich fans at the weekend. The end of the season also saw pitch invasions and violence involving Chelsea and Stoke supporters. In many cases, the trouble is not seen by the outside world these days because independent television cameras are no longer allowed inside many grounds. But tonight in Manchester, the supporters who in the past have earned headlines for all the wrong reasons were celebrating not only a new piece of silverware for the Old Trafford Trophy Room, but their own success in Europe, in many ways even more important to the future of English football.